working. There we go. the link on Facebook so it's not on there. But hey, <laughs> it's working, and there are humans. Hello. Um, the lights weren't very good, were they? Hello, internet. <laughs> so, how are you? And you? and all two people who are present. <laughs> what a week, shall we say? Here, if I bring you a bit closer. Oops. Without knocking my precious cup of tea. Let's move the expensive objects out of the way of my tea, in case I knock everything over. So what's your beverage of choice on this? What day of the week is it? Wednesday evening? Oh, that's too hot. Um, hi, Rebecca. Um, how is everything in England? <laughs> that's a big question at the moment. Um, no, generally, you know, things are good. Um, we're going through this beautiful autumn time, so um, you know, it's nice and crisp in the morning. This morning there was a little bit of frost on the on the grass behind our house and it just felt like that really nice time of autumn. Um, there's still enough daylight that you can still go for a nice walk and feel like, uh, you know, it's autumn rather than winter. Um, but to be fair, because I'm Canadian, I always feel like we get such a mild, easy winter here that I don't actually minded that much. Um, so where are you Rebecca and how are you doing? Kerry is doing fantastically, she's on the Prosecco, non-school night indeed. Um, hope it's been a good day. Kerry's been making these really really lovely, um, this little bookshelf, a book nook. So it looks like a little bookshelf and you tuck it between your books and your bookshelves and it's just kind of a pleasant little visual surprise when uh, when you come across it and uh, it just looks like a fantastic project I'm really tempted to make one it's just it, it's quite dinky so you don't end up with a big craft project that you don't know where to put after it just tucks in beautifully between books so I really like that idea <laughs> so much glue and paint I believe you um, so lag should be a bit uh, less between you posting to the chat and me being able to reply. I've found a setting in YouTube that's a little bit helpful. Um, how are things in Minnesota then? I'm just going to grab needles and things I need for this little project that I wanted to do tonight. I think I have the tools I need. So, what I wanted to try this evening, and the reason you're seeing all this beautiful colourful stuff, is I fancy doing a little bit of uh, visible mending. So that's where you fix a hole in either a garment or a sock or some something that you want to continue wearing. Um, but you don't necessarily do it in a kind of stealthy, sneaky way 
where it's just kind of nicely hidden. Instead, you kind of celebrate the fact that that garment has a life and is evolving. And the only, the one and only time I've done it, managed to go find this out of the laundry basket, um, is this sock. So this is one of my very first socks I made. And uh, under the foot, um, I went through it, but that was quite early on and I didn't know that actually the best thing to do, if you can, is to stop wearing it before you get to this stage. So I now have another sock that, yeah, that is my finger, you can see right through there. So I'm going to darn this one in a similar way to this one, but this one was really kind of, I had to just wing it because I hadn't really looked at any instructions. But I think I roughly did the right thing. So I think I'm going to repeat it, but aim to try and do it a little bit tidier. Um, and just see how it goes. I mean, this one I've only worn about three or four times since, but it's wearing quite nicely. Yeah, I'm curious if Minnesota's had snow because I've seen friends in Ohio and my family in Canada have been sending videos of very brief snows, just kind of a couple of mornings of snow and I think today was meant to go up to 18 degrees Celsius so you know goodbye snow for now. Um, I'm going to grab some yarn that is similar to what this is made of. So this is a either 100% merino or merino with a touch of nylon so I'll grab some scrap yarn of a different color because this is quite woolly so I don't think I'll use this one for this. even the same yarn. I think it might be. No, I want to use something contrast, it's more fun. Here we go, how about some sparkly yarn? I see there's a few more people watching, so do say hi. Let me know what you're up to. Let me know what your uh, choice cup of tea is on a Wednesday night. I'm on peppermint tea, really badass. Um, I think Carrie wins with her uh, with her uh, prosecco on a on a weeknight. She is on holiday in her defence. Yes, same yarn. How how is it that this yarn I've made? two pairs of socks with and I've used it to darn various things. I've used it as provisional cast on yarn a few times and somehow I still have some. <laughs> it's like, I, I do think it was slightly more than a hundred grams, but still, how on earth is it still going? So I'm not sure what length I need. I don't want to make it too long. Worst case scenario, I'll need to cut another piece, but I hate working with really long pieces. How many years ago did I knit these socks? Uh, I'd say these socks are probably five-ish years old. It would definitely be in my in my Ravelry profile. I was so proud. They took me ages. I now get probably, if I focus on that project every evening, I can get a pair of socks done in a week or so. I'm actually sure. I am quite short, so that's marginally better. So yeah, I can do a pair of socks in about a week, and back then it would have probably taken me a month or something. So um, if you want to share what you're working on, actually, I think this is a little bit too big. Let's find something a smidge smaller. Yeah, let me know what you're up to. If you if you want to post to Instagram, uh, use the hashtag uh, along the lanes, and I'll go have a look later. Yeah, so there we go. Let's see these two. So that one was a little bit on the chunky side, so I'm going to go with this one. Still rounded tip, so that I don't go through 
uh, through the strands of yarn I want to try and go between them um, this one was a little bit too big and meanwhile the other one I found was a sharp one so sharp needles don't really suit this a sharp needle would be better suited probably to doing something like a fabric patch on something which I might try later um, this jumper, this granddad jumper that I've got underneath, um, I'm actually going to move out of the way. Oh yeah, before I start I wanted to show you. Do you like my wild scrappy socks? So these were made uh, using mostly just odds and ends. You can recognize this one is the same yarn as these socks. I still have a little bit of scrap left. I was trying to just kind of use up some of the bits I had while, you know, giving myself rainbow feet. Because who doesn't love rainbow feet? Um, thankfully these are still in pretty good condition. I don't need to patch them up yet. Um, now we can move the granddad jumper. I can tell you more about that one in a little bit. We have our needle. Hi Wei, do share um, either on the Facebook page or on Instagram using hashtag along the lanes what you're working on. I'd love to I'd love to see what shawl you're working on. Um, I don't need these hoops. I might again use these hoops when I do the cardigan, but for now I am just going to work on these bad boys. So this is the one I've I did last time. Keep you there. And then I'm going to use the darning mushroom. So it's a smaller way of just giving yourself a surface uh, to work on. So if I slip it, oh, no. can't do puppets. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> stop, stop the things that go on in my head. Nobody needs to know those. <laughs> Um, so if anyone's ever tried weaving, this is kind of done in a way that's not too dissimilar. So I'll start by going up and down and going quite some way past the, the, the thin patch. Where's my thin patch? There we go. This is, this is where we're balding. And I'm going to go a fair bit above and below because I don't want to put the strain on the um, on the strands that are already suffering because they won't really necessarily last that long. So I want to kind of make a decent square around around this. So I'll go from about three rows past on each side and about three rows past um, top and bottom as well. Um, go in one direction and then essentially just crisscross and weave across. And I think what I'll do is I'll catch some of these strands in the middle as I go as well just to kind of merge it all together a little bit more so I'm going to do it going under each of these uh, no, I need to start lower than that so if this is my last bit that's kind of very weak I want to start about three below Makes for a bigger patch to to fix up, but in theory it means we won't have to do it um, do it again too soon. So following the line of my V's, I'm going to go a few stitches above the last weak one. Come back through. See, this is why you don't use too long a strand, even though I was getting a bit greedy there. So um, for now I'm holding my little tail, which will get woven in, I guess, at the end. You can see we're going up to top to bottom. And then we go back to the bottom and we go one V to, uh, well in this case, to the left of it.
<laughs> dads who are like kids are the best. My dad is is also quite uh, quite childish. tends tends to kind of jump around when mum's trying to have a a real FaceTime conversation with me. But um, I uh, I appreciate his uh, his humour. So I'm actually going a little higher than I had started. It's not going to make perfect square, but I'd rather have something a bit light, less square and go a little bit further beyond the, uh, the V. So I'm going to go one V to the left. So here we go. Well, I hope you managed to give him a good haircut, uh, even if he was uh, if he was being a goofball while you're trying. Um, who else has uh, has done the whole uh, lockdown, give yourself a haircut? Uh, my husband has given me a haircut and I gave him a haircut and I was reasonably pleased with the, with his uh, his job trimming my absolutely enormous impossible hair. So um, I think it's made me realize that I don't really mind home uh, home haircuts. I hate going to the hairdressers. Yep, I probably should have started a little higher. So let's just uh, wing it from here and go a little bit higher. So the more we go along, we kind of end up with this stripey setup. Um, and holding it a little firm, but not too tight around the darning mushroom is kind of the best way to just stop it from jigging around too much. Even now, to be honest, I might grab a hairband and try and tie it at the bottom. Stop it moving. Probably should have done that before I started. It would have been a lot steadier. You know, you practice, you learn, and then you do it better next time. Three twists should be enough. Yep, there we go. So I'll hold a little bit better. Yeah, I guess early season snow, uh, in response to what Rebecca's saying, uh, a little bit of snow, but it's mostly gone. It tends to come and go pretty quickly, and uh, later on in December, when it comes, it stays, uh, it stays, and sometimes overstays its welcome. We haven't had a Christmas in Canada in quite some time now, but it's it really is quite uh, quite magical. <laughs> yes, this is better than horror movies. You can always put headphones on, try and not hear the screams of pain of the monsters. So who out of uh, out of our little group here plays video games? And if you do, what's your uh, what's your style of game? I've only. Um, Recently, I, I've played a touch of Minecraft lately, but not that much. Um, mostly because I just I constantly have another craft project I want to take on. So it feels like video games just fill up my time with something other than the ultimate productive project I want to I want to be working on. Um, but there are some fun ones, and sometimes it's a fun way to just kind of uh, forget about the. Uh, current reality, shall we call it. Hi, yarn in my pocket. What, um, 
what kind of games do you like do you like to watch i have to admit i prefer watching somebody playing minecraft than playing it myself which uh, i suppose is a little bit odd but it works for me it leaves my hands free to be able to continue knitting um all while being kind of entertaining especially if i'm working on, on easy knitting like a pair of socks or the current top i'm working on oh alison hello lovely friend who also lives nearby of course i forget your username change yeah okay carrie you like games so long as they're not horror <laughs> getting flashbacks to uh um which one was it until dawn i think that's that has to be probably my favorite horror video game it's um a cabin in the woods style story where you have to make decisions decision a or b to try and avoid people dying or or if you're feeling grim to try and just kill everyone who's participating and uh yeah i liked the voice actors in that as well So, oh, now I feel bad because Alison actually knows how to do this. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. I just needed an excuse to uh, to actually get around to darning a few things. Um, <clears throat> for anyone who's feeling competent at this, I uh, I am always open to uh, words of advice and suggestions. So I think I've kind of I've covered enough enough of the area. So I'm gonna make sure it's not overstretched. Just a little bit tight with my hairband, um, and then I'll uh, I'll start going the other direction. Any mobile games, Rebecca? It seems that some of my uh, some of my friends are finding uh, finding a way to uh, play a lot of. Um, no, not Candy Crush. What's what's more popular these days? Well, one one of one of those kinds of things where uh, uh, where there's kind of an infinite number of levels that you can uh, that you can play. Right. So I'm starting to go just left to right, and this being the first row, I'm kind of anchoring it by going through, going into the end stitches as well as crisscrossing the uh, the warp in the other direction so that gives me a little bit of an anchor at the top i mean the other one not particularly high tech but it's lasting so i figure it'll do there are some much much fancier way of uh, of darning which is much more um let's say visually exciting uh some people do it where you've got kind of a little window in the center with uh with your little weave but also kind of little extra lines around the edge where they, they anchor it back out and it looks very pretty and it's certainly a lot more visible mending so it really really fits the name because it's often done in kind of these kinds of rainbow colors rather than being done in kind of uh, slightly more slightly more neutral colors so i guess this is just a balance of making making it firm enough without without tugging to the point where you're making it too tight yeah, so Candy Crush is uh, clearly is still a thing then. Yeah, so Rebecca says uh, playing Candy Crush, and if it's not that, it's watching something about ghost hauntings and history. Um, I don't know where you where you tend to watch it, but I've found. Um, we're so lucky to be of a generation that has access to so much um, content made by individuals. I find some of the most interesting kind of history bits are not even produced by large production companies, but are produced by individuals who are passionate about something and um, who share it on platforms like YouTube or 
you know, Netflix is trying to sign some more independent projects. And it's kind of, it's that kind of variety and the fact that you're not necessarily watching the same thing as your work colleagues or your neighbors. Um, it, it does take away from the old tradition of uh, what people used to call the water cooler conversation at work because you haven't got two people watching the same thing. But as far as, you know, scratching that itch and allowing you to watch something that you actually fancy, I, I tend to prefer that. So here, we've got a few rows here, um, just crisscrossing, so going over, under, over, under. And um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's the same thing I did here. And I'll just keep going in a square until until I've reached to the bottom of those uh, of those bars. So it's uh, yeah. So Rebecca agrees. Uh, YouTube content seems to be winning the day for a lot of us. Um, it's not necessarily always the most deeply researched or most deeply highbrow. But to be honest, neither is a lot of stuff on traditional TV these days. Right, so there I finished underneath, so I'll be picking up just an edge stitch just to give me another little anchor here, but then starting over, under, and so on. feels very strange to do this without any music on. I pretty much, I live with music on all the time, but um, as far as I can tell with YouTube, it's always better and uh, less likely to cause issues if you're, if you're not using commercial music. And added to that the fact that you're probably up to something else and you probably have other sounds around you. So um, I'm just, uh, I'm just going for a quiet little hour rather than my usual uh, music on 24 seven. Yeah, Carrie says uh, this mending is so much simpler than, than expected. Um, there are much more um, fancy ways to do it and this one I can I, I can tell that it's not um, it's not as dense as it could be I could do it a lot closer there's also um, the darning where I think it's Swiss darning where you essentially follow the shape of your knit stitches um, which is uh, very very pretty is a nice way of basically making it disappear and probably would have been reasonably appropriate for something like this where the um, stitches were completely gone they were mostly gone but they still all made the same original knitted shape so i think that could have worked here um but i figured i'd uh, mostly i'd start simple because i didn't make the time to look at any instructions before i started so i basically just went off of what i did last time um i do have a pdf of a darning workshop but um, one out of respect I didn't want to be following her step by step on video while giving it to everyone for free because that seemed like a little bit of an unfair thing. Uh, once I've used it and I've learned her techniques I'll probably do it on camera because you know I'm just darning my socks but I figured I wouldn't just give you somebody else's step by step that felt a little bit a little bit uh, inappropriate. And I think for the Grandad cardigan I might try darning or mending but also using a piece of fabric just just because why not for fun. Yeah so there we go so uh, Alison does the Swiss darning which is the duplicate stitch just following that like little skinny few strands remains of the sock so that requires maturity 
because that requires remembering to stop wearing your favorite socks before they are destroyed rather than um, like I do with my commercially bought socks usually you know wearing them for a week after not not for a week wearing them a few times with washes in between before actually going yeah I think this one's done now I'd be curious if anyone has ever bothered mending store-bought socks because I hate how quickly um, store-bought socks of the kind of standard co thin cotton variety also um, also get used up but every time I just look at them and I just put them in the fabric recycling bucket that I have which is which is now enormous because I haven't been to the fabric recycling since before the original lockdown so uh, yeah that's probably about two shopping bags worth of various fabrics that are no longer good enough but that I don't want to just put in the black bin because that seems ridiculous uh, Rebecca I haven't done any spinning lately no it, I, I'd say the more we're heading into winter and the less time I need to or want to spend in the in the garden in the greenhouse the more I'm thinking that my spinning wheel might have to come back in here currently it's in the <coughs> chaotic storage room upstairs um, but I think I really fancy um, doing a little bit of, of spinning this winter I have a fair bit of fiber left I've I last year I sold some locally um, felt like Santa. Was, in fact, it was the first week of January and I just made goodie bags of fibre and sent off to uh, about 20 people around the UK um, because I just I had too much and I had to organise this, uh, this room which became my office and craft room last December. So um, yeah, I think I will do some spinning soon. Do you're currently looking to buy an antique spinning wheel. Do you already spin? Um, a spinning stream, yeah. Oh, good God, I would hypnotize and put everyone to sleep if I did that. Either that or entertain everyone with my swearing when I, uh, when I make boo-boos. Yeah, the fabric recycling happens in a couple of different ways here. So there's, um, I think, the standard recycling center, which is where you can kind of drive in and they have these kind of big um, giant containers where you go up a set of stairs and drop cardboard or whatever materials you have. And they tend to have a fabric drop off there. The other option is um, the ones who take the fabric Often they claim to be charities, but they're commercial organizations who donate a, pro a proportion to charity. Um, they will take bags of clothing and other fabric. And um, unfortunately, where I struggle with that is that a lot of that fabric just gets bundled into giant kind of piles of bales of kilos of fabric and then just gets sent off to usually to Africa for them to deal with and yes there's a little bit of income but it also means that they become a kind of uh, the, the world's recycling center and a lot of the fabric doesn't really find a new use so it puts our mind at ease because it goes somewhere else but in reality it's not really solving the problem it's just moving it to somebody else's backyard so really that's one of the reasons I'm trying to learn things like darning trying to uh, sew my own clothes or at least fix up what I have if it doesn't fit quite right. Um, unfortunately it's a lot harder to fix clothing that doesn't fit you right when it's too small because you've had too good a lockdown. So that's that's a slightly different pro problem. Oh wow three wheels buying fourth okay so you mean business. Um, what's your what's your favorite kind of uh of spinning do you tend to get um 
colorful fiber from uh, from dyers, or do you, you know, do you go old school with um, with working on with your own fleeces? I have to admit, I I think I came to the conclusion that uh, actual fleeces was probably a little bit too um, too pro for me. I flit too much from one craft to another to really uh, be able to take advantage of uh, something like working with an entire fleece. I love the idea of starting with a full sheep fleece and going through the entire experience of um, of turning it into a piece of clothing. Um, I do believe Alison has experience in that. Um, but at this point I have to keep it simple and let somebody else do the hard work. So this still feels, I have to admit, this feels a little bit uh, more hollow and less dense than it felt last time. So I think I might cheat a little and just go add some extra rows in between where it feels a little bit too shallow here. Um, so go back just between the others and yes it means that in some directions you'll have two going the same way next to each other but really so long as it creates an extra density it's not um, it's not the end of the world we have other things to worry about I promised myself I wouldn't talk about politics Oh, a big bag of raw alpaca. That'll, that'll be lovely. Um, there are quite a lot of alpacas around here. Um, there's one... Uh, I, f I find it hilarious. A chap who has made his fortune in... Uh, I call it construction and destruction. So construction and kind of uh, management of the rubbish that comes from construction. And um, as a side activity, if you want to call it that, he has acquired a uh, what started as a few alpacas and is now, I think last I heard, if I'm correct, 8,000 heads. So that's 8,000 animals, um, which is just crazy. I've only, I've only uh, met some of the alpacas in um, when I went to uh, an alpaca show and they were you know his were were all winning for their fleeces so it's it's pretty cool I love the idea I used to joke that we'd get alpacas someday but now now that I know how long they live I don't think I'm prepared for the responsibility that goes with it Yeah, Kerry, if you're curious about that process, I certainly know the uh, going from a fleece to a garment in theory, but there are others here who, uh, who would be able to tell you more in uh, much more in practice than I can. So I've got this much yarn left. I'm just going to give myself a couple more little zigzags where I feel like it's a little thin and this is you know it looks a bit like a dog's dinner <laughs> I admit I fully admit but it will um, keep my tootsies warm and it will keep these socks going for a little bit longer so I think uh, that's 15 and 8k I think I might pop up here and do just one more up here and then I'll probably have run out of yarn I'll take it off the mushrooms, I'll have a look in the light, and if it looks like it needs another little uh, few supporting rows, we might even do them in another colour just for a laugh. Lace weight alpaca is 
beautiful spinning lace weight is an incredible test of patience. When I started spinning, I think like probably like everyone everyone does at first, my thought was that my ultimate objective was to um, spin something that was like commercial yarn. So spin multiple plies of very, very fine yarn and then um, then ply them together. And absolutely that's that's an option. Um, but while it was possible, it was also kind of frustrating because it never felt quite good enough. And I came to realize that um, I came to realize that my darning mushrooms just kind of fallen apart in the sock. <laughs> One part, two part. Um, I came to realize that if I want very perfect yarn, I'll figure out the type I need and exactly what I want and I'll just use commercial yarn. Um, there are so many people who make and dye really wonderful yarn that I figured I'd support them and I'd keep my spinning time for goofy playful stuff and I have done that since and I have absolutely no regrets. I find spinning just for a laugh just so relaxing and it also means usually when you spin with a plan it's a big project it's not you know it's not 100 grams it's not uh, one bath it tends to be for a long project and I never stick to it for long enough it just ends up being frustrating so I think um, everyone has their preference but it's turned out to be to be the best way for me is just do it for fun do a hundred grams of completely wacky yarn and then move on so I'm now I'm just going to weave in the last bit here get it out of the way and into the sock bye bye Fleece, so, so um, yarn in my pocket is suggesting a fleece to finish, uh, finished along at some point. Um, I think I will, uh, I, I will make a, uh, a, a little badge maybe. I'll be about the size of my, <laughs> my project. Well, Carrie is one of the one of the few people who has actually uh, knitted with my with my hand spun. I've got, let's see, I've got one project here. Oh, these ones, only... I thought I'd made this entire shawl out of hand spun, but the shawls I've made out of hand spun I've all donated. This one is a commercial yarn from Old Maiden Aunt. Uh, small alpaca farm yarn from Canada and this one is a hand spun so just the bright the brighter color so that's that's from a hedgehog fibers club from many many years ago I'm not sure if they even do a, a fiber club anymore um, but yeah this is just a big triangle shawl like this and I just wrap it around my shoulders and then around my tummy and tie it at the back and it's just very very cozy when I come into my office and it's uh, it's really cold in the morning so before I lose my needle I'm just going to weave in the other tail so the starting little one I just like the name Zwarble Zwarble So once we've finished this, I'll go see quickly if uh, if anyone's posted anything either on Facebook or on Instagram to share what they're up to. So now that's off the tension, um, it's actually, as I said, it's not very very tidy but it's um, if I put my hand on the inside in comparison to when we started 
there's definitely nothing coming through I can't I can't push through with my fingers so it's um, it's serving its purpose it's going to give these socks a longer life and um, if you're ever looking for techniques like this I, I found most of the most of the instructions on uh, on YouTube really oh the magic of YouTube Have we got anyone posting anything? Oh, hey. I will find a more high-tech way to show you this next time. I assure you I'll figure out screen sharing. For now, what you get is Carrie's working on a fab, lovely, lovely blanket. Um, and I have never met anyone who crochets as fast as Carrie does. She is a machine. So um, that's going to make a lovely granny squares uh, no, one giant granny square, right? Just one big, big one. I'm currently working on my granny square blanket. And uh, this isn't the blanket, this is the leftovers. And I've got four squares that were just too many for the rest of the blanket. So I've taken out the ones that were kind of a little bit muddier colors. And actually they look quite nice on camera. Um, so I've taken a few out and um, I uh, will continue to procrastinate and not actually sew it together as I mentioned a few days ago. That is a fabulous project. Rebecca is working on spinning the fiber for her own cardigan. So I assume that's two one pound bags and not 21 pound bags of swirls uh, that she's currently spinning. So that's a, you know, that's, that's a great way to be very much in control. Being able to choose how you spin your yarn means that you'll have exactly the yarn that you want for your cardigan, um, provided you have the skills for it. So not if I did, but you know, it comes, it comes with practice. As with anything, the best way to improve at something is to just be willing to practice, experiment. And talking about experimenting, I'm going to have a go at adding a little patch to this granddad, very fetching granddad cardigan. So let me show it to you. I won't model it because I'm wearing my other um, secondhand shop find. So this was two pounds at the at the shop, as was this this granddad jumper. It's actually it's actually a really nice color. Maybe you can see it better here. Uh, that still doesn't quite convey. It's got greens, it's got purples, it's got blues in it. Um, and I was really pleased of my like old school granddad find until I uh, made another find when I got home. After washing it, I realized that um, there were holes like everywhere so there are I think just from when I picked it up today I counted probably at least five holes so why did it end up even available for buying I don't know is it because the charity shop people don't have the time to assess things before they put them on the shelves or is it they don't know any better. I, I, I don't have an answer. All I know is that I was a bit annoyed to get home and realize that yeah I'd bought something that was full of holes. My fault for not checking though. So I am looking for a not the most noticeable as a place to start but I think most of the holes are all on the front. Oh there's one on the sleeve. Let's let's go with it. Let's go with the bottom of sleeve one I think. That'll be fun. 
and I think for this one I feel like using this. Uh, this is uh, Jameson's Shetland Spindrift. Can you see? Yeah. And it's uh, it's kind of a reasonably fine fingering weight. Looks about the same as this one. Um, and it'll just make a fun little patch. Nothing too fancy, not too complicated. Oh, mending holes by needle felting is Alison's suggestion. That's a very good suggestion. One downside, I will needle felt my fingers guaranteed. I have been known to do that pretty much every time. But if there are any holes around the elbows, that could be a really nice solution. Is it too much there? Oh, it's crawling around. Yep. So I, I don't think this was worn a lot, and I can't gauge whether whether they're moth holes mostly because I don't really know how to recognize moth holes but I mean it is real wool um, who knows could be could very well be moth holes but it's gone through the wash before it came anywhere near my stash that's for sure Yeah, oh, 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 you're all full of such good ideas. So Alison su suggested needle felting, which is a good solution for things like elbow patches. And Carrie added the idea of adding some accent stitches around, uh, around the edge, which would be, you know, one, it would hold it in place very well. Two, it would just look cool and intentional. So I really, really like that idea. I think here again I'm just going to loosely put my uh, my elastic band, maybe two twists should be enough this time. So this is, you know, a very defined hole, but I think we mostly, we still have loops around the edge. It's, uh, I don't know, for those who have moth experience, does this look like moth holes? And how big is the wing? I might do two strands held together, it feels like one might be a little bit on the thin side. Yes, Spindrift do do kits um, in response to Rebecca who says she's got a kit of Spindrift for a hep shawl. That's, um, yeah, they, they make some lovely kits and it's sometimes it's quite nice to just let somebody else sort it out, choose the colors, organize the, the kind of, have the pattern with it so you can really just jump in rather than have to you know, go through all the stages of figuring out if you've got everything you need. Um, yeah, I do like kit projects. Um, originally this, I've got a whole bag of random colors of spin drift and this started, um, I don't have any in there, uh, with a felting project of making little um, little gnomes. So they were meant to be long, thin little gnomes with little pointy hats and you would knit them reasonably loose and then you would felt them. And in, in felting, uh, wool shrinks and it became dense enough that it made a perfect uh, double pointed needles holder. Which was which was quite sweet. Um, mine didn't kind of I didn't felt them hard enough, so sometimes the double pointed needles could still poke through, which is less than ideal. Um, but uh, it was just it, it was just a fun little project. It was by the same person who released the uh, Hexipuff blanket, which was all the rage on Ravelry at some stage. Um, which where he made these little hexagon shapes using uh, using sock weight yarn and then um, filled them with a little bit of filler and when they were done tied them at the corners with with the rest and made an entire blanket out of it of course most of us would start so enthusiastically and start losing steam after a dozen of those little hexagons and put them in a ziploc bag and never look at them again for years. I still have them. 
yes, Japanese visible mending is is beautiful, and there's there's quite a few different kind of methods. There's as Carrie's mentioning sashiko, which is kind of all lovely um, line patterns, and it's just it, it, it's just so clean and tidy and beautiful. It, it looks great. Um, what I've found in just experimenting, I experimented using just felt as the fabric and uh, embroidery floss and it's uh, it's difficult to get absolutely even length of stitches and perfectly parallel little lines even when drawing them on the fabric ahead of time I found that I really struggled to make them as tidy so I think it's absolutely beautiful and it's it's an art um, I'm potentially not quite patient or organized enough for that kind of thing, but it doesn't bother me. I still quite like making funky little things and leave the super tidy to other people. So here, again, because we're missing some bits and have some complete holes, I'm going to go a little bit higher here. For a few minutes my fingers itch to go look at the news but I shall not go look at, look at the news because I'm going to guess that nothing's changed and that no more answers so I might as well just stay here chill out relax and leave it for later So I can see there's nine people watching. There's a few who said hi, so if there's anyone else new, um, don't be shy, you can say hi. We're all a nice bunch of people and, uh, and it's very cool hearing, uh, hearing who else is watching, what you're up to. And I have confirmation from Kerry that nothing has changed in terms of my itchy fingers of looking at politics, so I shall remain offline for that. So here this one I'm I'm doing quite thickly because I'm I'm holding I'm holding the yarn double and that is purely because this this feels a little bit thin in comparison. Um, I'm, I can see my stream can anyone let me know is the stream jumpy like does do my hands stop moving then catch up quickly because I think that the app I'm using for controlling my phone might be uh, using Wi-Fi instead instead of wired and I may improve on that next time. Yes Rebecca that is very much um, that is very much what we're talking about. We're all a little bit, um, let's say, on edge about the American elections. I'd like to pretend that being in a different country means that we're not uh, affected by it. But I think uh, everyone is thinking about our American friends, family, and just kind of wondering what's going to happen. Yeah, the whole world is very much watching and waiting to see what happens. See, I failed. My plan was to not mention that at all during the stream, but I think it's uh, sometimes difficult to uh, not talk about uh, world events. Um, once I've finished this, I want to show you something, partly because while I was kind of scavenging around looking for uh, looking for things for this project, 
I, uh, I found something that I haven't looked at in a good little while. Again, it's lovely yarny fibery stuff that I think you might uh, you might find interesting and I just you know do you have those those crafty things that you need to sometimes just get out of the bag pet for a little bit and then put back in the bag like yarn that's just too pretty to use or or fiber that hasn't quite spoken to you hasn't told you what it wants to be or you know for those who sew same with fabric sometimes the fabric just needs to kind of uh, percolate for a little while before it tells you what it wants to become. So I'm going to quickly, Terry confirms that it is a little jiggy jiggy. I want to see if I can switch to... Apologies for the, for the wiggle wiggle. I'm trying to change the camera settings. Okay, I have switched to USB. Let me know if it does the, the, the hand jiggle, but I would imagine that now that it's plugged in and using the plugged method rather than the Wi-Fi, it will probably stop doing those little jumpy jumps. Yeah, as Kerry says, pretty yarn sitting on the shelf so I can admire it. Um, day to day, uh, that is one uh, one upside for uh, uh, from many of my friends saying uh, they're working from home for the first time and kind of getting to sneak in that little moment of crafty stuff in between uh, in between work times. In in my case, I've always I've been working from home for well, fifteen years. Gosh, is it that much? It's only over a decade now. Of working from home the whole time so you kind of uh, you have to make your own uh, set your own limits because temptation will always be there to go do something other than work um, but you have to focus get your day's work done and then and then go play with all the things So this also feels like it's a little bit, bit spacious in between. So I think I'll, uh, I'll end up going back and adding a few extra strands at the end, even though it makes it slightly less tidy looking. Um, I will definitely look online for some more tips and tricks on making this look a little bit more, um, a little bit more tidy. to shift things up a little. So now I'm at the bottom of the hole and I can pick up a little bit of the the green yarn loops at the same time as I'm going uh, above and below. Yeah, so this won't be the this won't be the t tidiest looking, but it will uh, again keep a hole from getting bigger and look like a cute little patch. I think something else I might try if I need a larger patch is, let me show you if I can find it. Where do you live now? Hmm. Yeah, reorganize the shelves. The one downside of reorganizing is I don't know where everything is. Them here. Nope. It's going to be in that corner that I can't reach. I have a little um, pin loom 
that is only about this big, just about kind of the size of a beer coaster. And uh, it's the same process as this where you go top to bottom, left to right, and it's um, it makes perfect little patches and that would fit really nicely to kind of fill in a gap. And then I'd probably have to trim the rest out, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I might try that if I have something the size of an elbow or a knee that I need to fix. That would uh, that would probably work quite quite nicely. I might get into the bottom a bit. I'm just doing. imagine a darning egg works much the same as uh, as this darning mushroom. I suppose by not having a kind of stem part it's probably a little bit more wibbly wobbly so you actually need to hold it a little bit harder. Um, but I would imagine otherwise it serves the same purpose of giving you a flat and smooth surface. I'm sure I've seen people use you know perfectly standard house things um, as uh, as an alternative to this. Um, I suppose so long as it gives you a stable point to pass your needle over and under, it's, uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. But I do quite like this little mushroom. So here I'm just doing a little bit of gap filling because this one feels, the first one feels a little bit on the spacious side between the stitches. To be fair this is likely to um, felt in place a little bit once uh, once it gets worn. So I think yeah I'm, uh, I'm satisfied that I've, I've kind of generously covered the hole so again I'll do a little bit of just twizzly twizzly go inside and cut the yarn in a minute. You know, the light bulb suggestion did cross my mind and then I thought, well, personally, I'm probably too clumsy to use a light bulb as an alternative to the darning mushroom, so I won't suggest it to anyone else. I don't want to be responsible for anyone injuring themselves. Um, but yes, it's it certainly would, would work. Okay, so I think I'm going to take that off and go inside and just weave those little ends in. Uh, I am, I don't have all the colours, but uh, just for fun, I'm taking votes what uh, what colour do we think I should, uh, I should make the next little patch. I think I'll do one more and then I'll probably call it, a, call it an evening. I'm sure you all want to uh, go do something else on your, with your evening. So yeah, I'll just pass that through. So here's, this is what the inside looks like. So you can see the edges and you can see here the central hole where there's absolutely none of the original fabric. So I'm just going to, um, while I weave these ends in, I'm also going to just catch a few of the, the last little remaining, uh, remaining little stitches that, that where the yarn had been cut. So. It just gives it one more level of stability. I think some people start by doing this at the beginning by just picking up all the loops, but because the, these stitches weren't unraveling at all, I figured I'd just leave it. Scissors.
like even with a plastic bag on top of the of the light bulb I'm not sure I would uh, I would trust myself <laughs> Okay, and now I'm just weaving the end in, sorry, I've got my camera, um, I'm weaving in the ends of what was my first uh, tail. Okie dokie. Um, one thing to mention, it's uh, this kind of yarn because it's quite um, quite woolly and uh, it's got a good grab, um, the ends can be woven in reasonably lightly and they'll kind of felt themselves in place. Um, if it was something really slick like silky yarns or something, I would have um, I would have woven those in, ends in a lot more, but this isn't really a solution you'd use on that kind of fabric anyway. Um, as I promised, I wanted to show you something colourful and beautiful. I dug up and again makes me wish I could travel. Let me move everything else out of the way. Taking, uh, I'm taking guesses as to uh, as to what this might be. Oh, my face is in the way. Has anyone got any thoughts on what this could be? Oh, you're definitely unraveling. No, nope, you're good. You're good. So this pretty rainbow is. Hold on, I want you to see all the colours, all the colours over here, there we go. Um, this is all hand dyed and uh, it's from a place in Denmark called Guld and they dye their own yarn. They, uh, as you can imagine, make quite a wonderful range and they also a few times a year, but obviously not this year, they run workshops to teach people how to do this kind of dyeing. And in May last year, I was lucky enough to go with uh, with a few friends. Um, one of them had already planned to go and she messaged me probably five minutes before the sign-ups opened. And it, it was small numbers. I think in total we might have been 12, 15 people at a push. So, you know, the spaces went very, very quickly. Um, so I, I literally booked it with two minutes of thoughts. Uh, I'd never heard of it, but it just sounded really cool. So we landed in Denmark and uh, went to what was essentially a scout hut. Um, and in the kind of outside um, covered area, we had these big uh, gas heated vats where we learned to do all the dyeing. So on different days we would do different um, different things. So we did kind of all of the yellows on one day. We did all of the reds on one day. And then on the last day we used the indigo. And that's where sometimes you'd use one to over dye another. So these were not all individual colors. A lot of them were combos, so combinations of different things. Um, and I have somewhere in an email from them, I have a chart of what each and every one is as a combination. Um, some are darker to lighter just because the dye bath itself got a little bit more um, used up, so there was less dye in it. Others are the color they are because of combinations, and others were. Um, then dipped in an iron bath or can't remember what other modifiers we used. Um, but this is our this is our white yarn that we started with. I think we had we had a white and a cream, so we had different bases. They looked the same on camera, but they're slightly different. 
and then yeah that was the that was our color wheel for our particular workshop a few weeks later i saw the color wheel for a different group who was so we were in may they were in june or july and it was fascinating to see the variation especially in kind of this yellows and greens range based on the um the fact that the plants were at a different level of maturity in their in, in their time of year so yeah this is this is so beautiful and i love it and i wish i could maybe display it in some way i don't think i'm emotionally prepared to use this yarn at this point um i wouldn't even know where to start um but i know some people have already used the dares to mend uh, family heirloom blankets, which, which is pretty cool, but yeah, I don't think I can. What could, what could I do with it? Mmm, tepid tea. So yeah, I just thought I'd share the little joy of this um, when I came across it uh, this evening. It really, uh, Kerry says, what an amazing experience. It really was like nothing I'd ever experienced. And it was my first time to Denmark as well. Sorry, I'm just picking up the bits of dust. Um, it was my first experience in uh, in Denmark. And it just everyone was so friendly and so welcoming. Um, I would love to go back. If you ever have the opportunity to do something like that, I hugely recommend it. Um, Every, we spent about three and a half days, three, four days together and all the new people I met there, I didn't stay in touch with everyone, but the ones I did stay in touch with, um, it's been it, it's been fascinating. There's at least three of them who now earn at least part of their income from uh, yarn dyeing and where possible natural dyeing. Obviously when you live in a city, natural dyeing isn't always... Um, the easiest thing to do because you can't necessarily go forage for what you need and depending on which country you're in you don't have access to everything but there's a couple who are now growing their own woad who are you know foraging for different things so it makes it, it clearly made a big difference to many of us it was, it was very very cool yeah, um <laughs> it was just this Kerry saying she wants to come to Denmark. Yes, I would. Oh, why well, give to go back? Um, yeah, I'm not sure I can bring myself to make a blanket using using those uh, those little minis. I'm sure someday I'll find the right use for it. Um, yeah, the idea of the shadow box is is a very good one. I do believe that's what the Danish uh, organizers told us many people in Denmark do so they'll hand it over as a heirloom and then they'll kind of display it um, with tiny little pins that just holds it open like a sun so that could that could look really cool and I'm lucky I've got a spot that I call my art gallery um, which is kind of a, a tiny wall between two rooms that had no use and I started putting pictures that I'd been buying from uh, like Instagram artists I like and got one of my own that's from a workshop that I did in um, I did in Berlin and it just became my kind of little art wall so that's really cool talk about art for those who've been keeping up with me or who popped in on the on Sunday night I started working on my uh, on my class project for my art class and the, this is this is where I'm at you see I don't know, I should have organized the camera better. You're seeing everything upside down. So this is um, this is where I'm at so far with the class. So we started with the background. So the darkest, it looks fairly black on camera, but it's kind of a, a very dark turquoise. And the idea with acrylic is that you work from the back towards the front. So started with the very dark background. And now I'm working on, on the bushes here. So let me put up at an angle by looking at the... So it's kind of purple working into pink. And then the next set of shrubs is, is going to be in front and is going to start with the lighter purple 
again fading into pink. Um, I've started on the trees but then I realized that the trees are forward of the shrubs so I kind of needed to finish these first. Then will come things like um, the main character, the additional characters and the very foreground ones. So it's um, it's a really cool class, learning to paint from the imagination. It's it's very challenging. Um, it throws me flat out of my comfort zone with every lesson. But once I start that lesson, I kind of go, oh, okay, oh, okay, it's not that scary. I can kind of handle that. So, um, so far it's been really good fun. These, uh, these aren't quite done. This is just the background color for... Uh, for the trees, they're kind of square trees, and they'll be they'll be paler in the center. So that's kind of the back layer. And then as I build up the layers, they'll get lighter, which means they'll have a dark edge and be lighter in the center. So yeah, it still looks a bit kind of all over the place and mishmashy, but uh, I'm hoping that within two weeks or so, I'll be able to post a picture on Instagram and say, look, I've finished it. And then on Sunday I showed you this one. I haven't made any progress on this one, but this is the little, uh, in fact, I think while I was messing around, I ended up splashing it with a little bit of white paint. So uh, he'll definitely need another coat. But um, this is this is quite fun because it's quite a thick, um, thick wooden canvas. So that's where I'm at with the various craft projects. Yeah, it's it's coming along okay. It's it, I, I'm surprising myself by sticking to it uh, as much as uh, as I promised myself I would. The difference between a lot of other classes I've done is this one is a 31 day class with some deadlines every few days, which kind of motivates you to keep up because if you don't meet the deadline, then you don't get the feedback from your from your peers, um, and it's really valuable feedback. It's been been really interesting hearing what others have to say. So I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, yeah, I'll absolutely, I'll, I'll share how that, uh, how the painting goes and I'll um, post some more pictures. Um, I think I have a pair of socks on the go, but I think once I've finished the, that one, I really fancy making another completely crazy little, uh, little pair of uh, scrappy socks. I think that'll be another way of just kind of nicely passing time in uh, in the evening. Yeah, so I think I'm going to uh, call it at that. Hope you've all had a lovely chilled out evening and that none of us are thinking too much about the various things that are happening here and abroad and everywhere else. So, you know, hug your pets and uh, enjoy your crafts and just uh, anytime you want to chat, find me on Instagram or say hi in the Facebook group. And I promise I'll give you more than 10 minutes notice next time I uh, decide to do a live stream. And way I would absolutely love to see what you're making with bobbin lace because that is something that's just so beautiful and again something that feels very masterful so i hope, hope you'll have some pictures to share with us so everyone have a lovely evening and i'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>